I have a question, Stuart. Um, I'm not quite sure how to form it, but uh, at the moment I'm finding the the amount of suffering and trauma in the world very overwhelming. I know we've talked about this a lot. <laughs> Running conversation. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I know. I know. Um, and it's working its way through me, but I'm when when it just feels like a, a fog. Um, how to kind of? I mean, obviously, this meditation. But it takes a lot of, it seems like it brings up more. It's like <laughs> to see, you become more aware of the wounds that are there for a time. And it's just yeah. a tricky period to navigate. And I wonder if you could talk about it. Well, the the, I think probably more, one of the most wonderful things about this meditation, it will bring up everything that is inside you. It will force you to take a good look in your own mirror and to begin to work on the things that are keeping you from having a spiritual life. Everything that is keeping you know, a human being from having a spiritual life is buried deep inside them. We need to you know, we need to plummet that river, that lake, bring up all the garbage and then get rid of it. You know, it's like homeopathy. You get the disease before you get rid of the disease. They give you the disease so you can get rid of the disease. And this is the same thing. You go deep inside yourself, which is something that scares the hell out of most people and keeps people from doing deep spiritual practice. They'd rather do Hatha yoga, they'd rather do, you know, things that are very simple and that, that don't force them to really deal with, you know, that place inside themselves that is keeping them from truly connecting with God. Uh, the reason I study with my teacher is that every time I sat in a class with him, it forced me to do that. I had to find what the problem was. Not only find it, I had to learn how to transform it into a spiritual life. And the problems in human beings go so deep and they're so deeply repressed inside them that those repressions really control their life and they keep them from ever being happy people. And I firmly believe we are born on the earth to learn how to transform this horrible thing called suffering into joy and love. And once we learn how to do that, we truly become children of God. We become one with higher energy in the universe. And all of that madness exists inside a human being. And almost nobody here works Everybody's trying to fix the external world. And in my lifetime, it's never gotten fixed. But all the trillions of dollars they poured into it and this, it's never gotten fixed. It's just as crazy now as the day I was born. It doesn't mean my life is crazy because I've learned how to transform that inner pain into joy, into love, into compassion into being able to take on the situations of other people and try to help them find answers inside themselves. You know, and when I, when I look out at the world, you know, all of that madness, it doesn't affect me inside myself. Only because years of doing profound inner work has changed me so profoundly so deeply inside that, you know, it's given me a whole new perspective on exactly what life is all about. And what, to me, it's all about taking the suffering, the difficulty, and everybody has it. 
you know, as long as we're alive, there's going to be something like that inside us and transforming it into a spiritual life, into being an open human being, having my heart open, being love, you know, having love inside me, joy, fun, kindness. And I think that is maybe the crux of the problem here. And I spent, I, as I've said, I spent nine years of my life looking for somebody who could teach me how to do that. I finally found them in my hometown after going half around the world looking and studying with them for six years didn't get me there, but then doing this for as long as I've been doing it got me there. It took about 10, 20 years after Rudy passed on for me to truly transform myself and so and to recognize that I'm born here to take all of the difficulty and the suffering and turn it into love. It's a very difficult thing for people to comprehend. We all want to be entitled to being happy without changing anything. Why me? That's the big question. Why me? Why am I suffering so much? Well, the answer is, you know, I can get balanced in some. I can open my heart. I can get my mind quiet. I can learn how to make choices in life that will enable me to be a successful human being living in the world. I can learn from everything that life has to teach me without judging, you know, and just learning what is this teaching me about me and what I have to do to grow. Forget formulating judgments in our head because that doesn't do anything but create more insanity. What can this teach me that I have to do to grow? I mean, I can't think of a better way of approaching the difficulties of life. Then they're no longer the enemy, they're the teacher. And I don't know a human being alive who doesn't go through that kind of teaching. What is life teaching me that I have to learn in order to get closer to God? And it's very painful, some of it. But everything is there to teach us. It started with me, really, when I was 16 years old. What is this teaching me? How can I grow? How can I find a way to find joy and love in my heart before, you know, it's 15 minutes before I die? Which is what I saw with my father just before he died. There was a state of enlightenment in him. I never saw that before. Changed my life. How do I get that? How do I work on myself deep enough? And I went from guru to swami to priest to this and that. And I met Rudy one day. That seemingly was kind of an accident. And it wasn't. It was really just, you know, the right moment. And he was the first one who showed me how to transform the suffering into you know, like a holy life, sacred life. And I said, I am not going <laughs> to walk away from this. You know, I need to learn how to do this. So what I'm saying basically is the answer is inside each and every one of us. We have to go deep enough open enough, dredge <laughs> the river, navigating the river of time, dredge the river of time, clean it up and get to a place where it's just one thing, just being a happy person, having joy and love. That's it, it's the answer. Having fun. 
I mean, it was interesting. I went yesterday to the museum, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, because they had an exhibition that I wanted to see, uh, you know, in Tibetan and, in, in, and Nepalese art, bodhisattvas. And they have really extraordinary works of art there, you know, I mean, just beautiful things. And I went to see it. And what was so amazing with the 20,000 people that were in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, it was literally, I mean, I went with Jennifer and Jennifer and I were the only people in the area where there was this incredible depth of spirituality. <laughs> I mean, there was nobody there. I mean, one or two people wandered in, in that area. And the sculptures were so profound, the paintings were so profound and transformative. I mean, they say in the Bible, many are called and few are chosen. They also say the same thing in the Bhagavad Gita, and it's really true. It's 20,000 people in a museum, and there's three people in the area where it's all about spirituality. <laughs> that, to me, was a great lesson. about what I have to learn in life and what I have to do to grow. Does anyone else have a question? Does anyone else have a question? I just have an announcement to make. You know, um, <clears throat> it seems that every Saturday, Bob Sink, who's many of you don't know, he's a student here, uh, will post on my website on a blog that I have there something that I've written. And he did yesterday, and it's really something very interesting, I think. People should go take a look at that, read it, and I think it might help people. And I think every weekend we will do this, probably on Saturday is when he does it, you know? And it'll be available, you don't have to pay anything, go there, it's short, it's, you know, but it's kind of like, uh, I mean, very interesting stuff. So I recommend it if you have these spare moments. You just go to my website, stewardperrin.com and click on, blog. <laughs> it's to be the strangest word, but that's where it is in my blog. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Stuart, I just want to um I just want to say thank you so much that you do <laughs> these sessions for us. Well Lisha it's here for you. You know, when Rudy did it, it was here, it was there for me. And just take advantage of it, you know. It's very precious what goes on here. Yeah. And it's, it's here really, for you. Really grateful. Thank you. You're welcome, dear. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, there'll be meditation on Tuesday. Thank you, bless you all. As I always tell you, you all are my teacher. You all are demanding that I go very deep inside myself to transform my internal bullshit into a spiritual life. You gotta have it. And you also have to transform it. And this whole session is about that. So God bless you all, thank you. And there'll be a meditation on Tuesday. Thank you.